A lot of people have written to me asking about the safety of taking ACE inhibitors during the COVID-19 pandemic. I therefore thought I'd do a video to try and clarify my understanding on the subject. Um, now, the first thing to say is COVID-19 has only really been around for four months. So any we have very limited data to support anything we recommend. However, I think that what I'm going to say is very much in line with what most of my cardiology colleagues believe and also what is supported by a lot of the kind of big cardiology bodies and institutions around the world. So the first thing to do is to explain what ACE inhibitors are and why they're used. And then um, after that, I'll try and talk you through how they relate or how they're relevant to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and the virus in particular. So ACE inhibitors are medications which are very commonly used in cardiology. ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme uh, and the, in, these medications inhibit this enzyme and they're used in patients who have high blood pressure, who have heart failure, who have diabetes with evidence of some kidney disease. Uh, you may recognize these medications because they all end with the suffix IL, I -L, okay, so ramipril, perindopril, enalapril, lisinopril. These are all ACE inhibitors. Now, what do they do and why are they used? Basically, when the heart is under any kind of duress, it struggles to function as well as it can uh, as a pump. And therefore, it doesn't quite get as much blood around the body as it would if everything was completely healthy. Now, the problem is that the kidneys are very sensitive to any changes in uh, the amount of blood that is being pumped out of the heart. So if the kidneys get even a trivially less amount or even a tiny less amount, even a tiny less amount of blood, then the kidneys will um, release a series of hormones which are then designed to restore the amount of blood that the kidneys get. Uh, these hormones uh, are regulated by this enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme, ACE. And what these hormones do is that they increase our stress responses, they make the kidneys absorb more water from our urine and therefore uh, restore the circulating volume and the idea is that if the if everything closes everything tightens up because of this stress response then there's more blood in the system and the kidneys will get more blood in the acute setting that may be okay but if this is continued over a prolonged period of time what actually happens is that the heart has to work harder as a result of these changes um, the heart has to generate a higher pressure to try and get the blood out and also it is having to work with a lot more volume because the kidneys are absorbing all this water from the urine to try and restore the circulating volume and as time progresses the heart can therefore weaken and this is the end point with things like high blood pressure or diabetes that over a period of time the heart can start weakening and actually in heart failure the heart has actually weakened and so what happens with these uh, medications is that they inhibit this enzyme called ACE, which regulates these changes that are brought about. Uh, and therefore, uh, it reverses or stops these changes from happening. Now, the reason ACE inhibitors are so commonly used is because there have been lots of studies where they've taken ACE inhibitors and they've looked at what happens to people who take ACE inhibitors compared to people who don't. And what they find is that those people who generally take ACE inhibitors live longer, their prognosis is better and bad things are less likely to happen to them from their high blood pressure, from their heart failure, from their diabetes compared to people who don't take ACE inhibitors. So ACE inhibitors prolong life in cardiovascular disease. That is why they're used. Now, where does this all fit with COVID and this particular virus? Now, the enzyme that ACE inhibitors uh, inhibit is called angiotensin converting enzyme 1, ACE1. But there are other converting enzymes, and one of these angiotensin converting enzymes is called ACE2. What we have found is that people who take ACE inhibitors for some reason seem to upregulate the amount of ACE2 they have. And actually, when you study their urine, they have more ACE2 that comes out, telling us that they have more ACE2 in their body. Now, 
coronavirus yeah, it seems to be corona is called coronavirus because it 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 looks like a crown if you look at the virus under a microscope it has spikes which look make it look like a crown and these spikes when the virus gets into our system these spikes need an ace2 receptors to bind onto so if you don't have ace2 receptors the virus can't bind if you have ace2 receptors then the, this virus can get stuck and that is how it gets into our lungs all right so the concern is obvious that if you have a medication which in some way increases your ace2 levels and you have a virus that needs ace2 to get in could it be that taking an ace inhibitor in some way increases the likelihood of more severe disease from the virus so that was the kind of hypothesis and the interesting thing was the the reason this was uh, the reason this became interesting was because when you look at patients in china um, you found that actually those people who had the most severe form of illnesses those people who were most likely to die or require critical care had a much higher incidence of things like um, they were much older, they had high blood pressure, they had diabetes, they had heart failure. And therefore, not surprisingly, a lot of them were also taking an ACE inhibitor. And so when you saw the most severe patients, most severely affected patients, many of them were on ACE inhibitors. And that is why people started raising the question, could this be due to the ACE inhibitor that they had the more severe form of illness. The reality is it's incredibly difficult to tease out. The reason it's difficult to tease out is because in general, people who are older are more far more likely to have diabetes. They're far more likely to have high blood pressure. They're far more likely to have heart failure and they're far more likely to require ACE inhibitors. And elderly patients are also far more likely to suffer the adverse consequences of the virus. So it's incredibly difficult when you have all these confounding variables to say, oh no, it's because of the medication. It could just be because these people seem to be, uh, people are older and sicker. And, you know, the, the ACE inhibitor is just an innocent kind of confounder rather than actually the cause. So, so, so far, there is no real convincing evidence that says, oh, just because you take an ACE inhibitor, you're at a higher risk. People who take ACE inhibitors tend to be sicker patients, tend to be older patients, and they are at higher risk. So what we do know, however, is that people who take ACE inhibitors over a prolonged period of time are generally are st relatively stable. If you then abruptly and without reason stop the ACE inhibitor, then you risk decompensating those patients. So if, and we also know that if you have an unstable patient, if you have a patient who has decompensated heart disease, they will undoubtedly do much worse compared to a patient who has compensated disease. So a patient who has decompensated heart failure with coronavirus will definitely do much worse than a person who has compensated heart failure. A person who has decompensated high blood pressure or decompensated diabetic disease compared to compensated disease will do worse. And there is a risk of decompensation if you take these medications off abruptly. So the general consensus at this point in time is that one, there is no convincing evidence that ACE inhibitors make you more susceptible to having more severe illness. Two, stopping the ACE inhibitor could in some way worsen your cardiac status and make you even more susceptible to more severe illness. And therefore, at this point in time, the recommendation from everyone from a cardiology field is do not stop the ACE inhibitor. Continue as you are. Obviously, take all the precautions to try and avoid getting the illness in the first place. But it is not if you're compensated, that is still better than if you're decompensated. And ACE inhibitors are very good at keeping people from being decompensated. So I hope you found this useful. I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, this is a time when we all have to come together and display strength and resilience. And um, I wish you all uh, good health. Uh, and um, um, if you need me uh, during this time, please don't hesitate to get in touch. OK, um, send me a message and uh, we'll see whether uh, I can answer your questions. Questions. All the best. Bye.